welcome back to the Two Mortgage Guys podcast. We are super excited to have you with us this week. A really good friend of ours from the Temecula Chamber of Commerce, and honestly, just an all-around good guy. You can't walk through the Temecula Valley without hearing his name. His name is Sebastian C.D. He is extremely good at what he does, and we're going to go over all that today, too. I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but if you need to know what it's like to market yourself, you need to know how to get pictures or media or audio or video done this guy knows it all he's your guru and he's also got a lot of other personal touches in his re- repertoire to him so without further ado thank you and welcome please sebastian to our studio hey hey man thanks yeah this, absolutely man i'm super excited to have you this here. is beautiful yeah i mean I, as we were talking right before we have a lot to, to owe james for this because yeah. uh, james is our marketing director who's always behind the camera who i t- usually tease from, because he can't do anything about it um <laughs> he, he did a really phenomenal job with he this. did a really great job this is beautiful and honestly coming from you we take that as a huge compliment because i saw your freaking garage or whatever you want to call that studio man yeah that thing looked like i walked into hollywood studios yeah that took that was a big big project that took me like uh I don't know, seven months like non-stop to to create yeah. No longer a garage. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's not. I mean, honestly, had I not seen what part of the house it was walking in, I would never have known. Yeah. And it's phenomenal. I mean, it was a great setup because I remember not only did you have, like, all the kind of stuff where we did for, like, soundproofing and audio and you could see all the things were set up for different angles and what you had learned over the time, but it was also, which is weird, may I add, really welcoming for a studio. Because usually when you walk in, it's a little bit cold or kind of weird. You know, you're you're kind of weirded out by all the technology. But I remember we sat down. We're sitting on, like, little sofas in there and just well, yeah. chatting. And... Yeah, because I also use it to, you know, to have parties, do karaoke night, you know, just like a little lounge, you know. Yeah. And it actually started off as a, a performance studio, which is where I was hosting my concerts. I was doing these home concerts. Oh, I don't think I realized that. Yeah. So okay. bef- before, you, before you walked in, at, at one point, it was just ba- basically empty, and I'd have the piano Right in, on that little stage. I remember that, yeah. And mm-hmm. then I'd host up to like 80 people in that room, believe it or not. So, Jeez. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Well, and honestly, that speaks a lot to who you are because you kind of, like, I, that's kind of how I felt like with you from day one since I met you. It's like, this is me. And like, when you say this is me, it's like, it's always it's kind of there. You know what I mean? And I think that's actually a really phenomenal quality. It's not, I mean, there's definitely value to having like the onion characteristics you peel from people, right? But being able to have something that is essentially says what it what it is 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 hard to find nowadays you know what i mean yeah and that's that's i think the epitome of who you are like i've never had to guess who sebastian was or what he did you know what i mean so that's really cool man and i appreciate that about you because there's an integrity in that that's hard to find nowadays as well so uh anyways yeah so if you guys haven't seen a studio i'm not inviting everybody over to his house that's not Ah, something everybody's welcome anytime (laughs) but i had a feeling he would say that so i set him up (laughs) anytime (laughs) but honestly you should go sometime it is really phenomenal seeing what he's done and I mean, uh, we just touched on this a little bit ago, and your partner in crime, Jonathan Montanez, was on here earlier. Who? And uh, <laughs> I'm going to make sure name. I'm going to make sure he yeah. listens to this episode for that. But um, you guys do that neighborhood. Uh, I'm sorry, neighbors monthly mixer, and that's neighbors started. monthly business mixer. I know that's a tough one. We should probably cut I forgot it down business. A bit. Sorry, yeah, I corrected almost all the way right. Yeah, neighbors monthly business mixer. Apologies, and honestly, that is important because that covers every facet of what it, of what it does. So I understand that. But, I mean, he reminded me this morning that you started that in your house. In that studio, yeah. 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 That's phenomenal. So, when I first joined the chamber, mm-hmm. I had no idea what mixers were. I mean, I had no no clue. And I and I had sponsored a table at the Coffee Connection for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I I saw what, you know, people walking around, passing business cards. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this is cool. Not the most entertaining thing in the world you know mixers aren't usually like you know that much fun as far as entertainment is concerned right but they're they serve their purpose right yeah um and at that time i had met uh the owner of neighbor's newspaper okay and a young lady uh nelly from uh, exhibitor marketing marketing and i decided to invite them over because i just had this idea i'm like why don't i just do my own mixer you know and just put an entertainment factor to it yeah invite in, in, you invite them to to co-sponsor, mm-hmm. and the the owner of the paper could you know I would I asked her to just put a full page ad there you as go. her sponsorship. I asked Nelly to do all the social media marketing, and I would do all the content. There and you go. we started in my garage, you know. Nice. And the first day we did it, we had twenty four people there. 
That's really good for our first day. For our first day, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good. You know? And, and you know, it's in your house. And there's music playing, you know, because like everything I do, I like to have music playing sure. and cool lighting. And, yeah, ambiance. And, and we already, and then before you knew it, we had mimosas there and we had the backdrop for photos there in my studio. And then all of a sudden, you know, three months later, we had, you know, I was in my backyard now with vendors. It's like, okay, well, it, it's growing way too fast. Sure. And then I had heard about the owners of the corporate room, mm-hmm. and I went over there, and they were just such wonderful people that I said, "Hey, how would you, how would you like me to host my mixer here?" And they had heard yeah. about my mixer already, mm-hmm. so yes, please, let's do it. Yeah. So boom, here we are now. You know, it's just that's like, awesome, man. Yeah. Well, no, and honestly, that's a that's a huge tell in the the ingenuity and the innovation that you carry as a person. Um, I think. And this, is, this is kind of a nice segue for us because one of the things I like about you so much, obviously, just in your career, there's an artistic vantage point that you're always going to have to take, always. That's part of what you do as, as, as doing media marketing and all the stuff that you do with the camera work. And so what's interesting is how you've hybrided that artistic side of you to kind of look artistically into the business world and figure out how to make it your own. Yeah. And I would say that, honestly, the Neighbors Mixer is kind of a, a nice – product or child as you will of, of that of that kind of mindset because you're not looking to reinvent the wheel you just want to make it you yeah. you want to make it artistic you want to make it different and I'm, i've done your your mixer I, I i thought it was so phenomenal walking and got live piano playing there's mimosas being offered to me and there's you know people that were talking and chatting it was, it was great it was just like just like you just someone who wants to be your neighbor so yeah. to speak you know well i think everybody you know not everybody is an extrovert Sure. There's a lot. In, in fact, most people aren't, you know, that excited to go out and network. It's yeah. just something that they have to do. Mm-hmm. So when you create an environment that's relaxing and entertaining, yeah. it loosens people up. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes them put their guard down and makes them feel like it's okay to, to, to talk to people, to introduce themselves without, you know, without like having a spotlight on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's what I feel is happening. That's why I feel people are keep coming back because of that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, it pays off to in the sense that you've got essentially two different facets of yourself, your marketing, right? You've got CBAS Video Productions, yeah. and then you have your, your pianist side of you that does concerts and all this stuff, and yeah. both are live and active. It's not like you're only dormant on one side of this. Right. Music was something that I was do, I've was i been doing for the past, you know, 25, 30, almost 30 years now. And seven years, about seven years ago, I started to do video. Okay. And But my music career was really going very well. I didn't have to stop. Um, I was having, I had a thriving, thriving music career. That's awesome. But like any, like any biz, like anything, you know, you do too much of something mm-hmm. and especially when you have, when it's your passion and you're using it and it becomes something that you're paying the bills with, mm. there's just like any business, there's ups and downs. Sure. And those moments where it, where it's, where it's down, mm-hmm. you start to resent it a little bit. Yeah. And that's something I didn't want to keep feeling with music. Because yeah. music is something very important to me. Yeah. So I said, I can't live my, the rest of my life, you know, going up and down like this. So I wanted to create something, you know, do something a little bit different, but still keeping myself artistic. So I had a lot of experience being in front of the camera. You know, I was, I've done three PBS specials where I've had cameras around me, flying cameras. I've been, you know, I've been interviewed on, you know, on, on TV shows and I've always been really like uh, intrigued by all the cameras around me. Sure. You know, this is cool. So yeah. I, I was learning things without really, you know, knowing. Yeah. So when I decided what should I, when I was thinking about what should I do, I already realized I had a, a pretty good head start as far as video production. Mm-hmm. So they all do some video, you know? There you go. And uh, ironically, now the, the video business has done so well for me that I've... I, I, I didn't have to give up my music. In fact, I've been, I've been able to double down because now my mu- my video business is my music's investor. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And and the fact, anytime you have a, t- I, and I always tell people who have talents, you know, for example, uh, Matt Follison. Yeah. Okay. He's an opera singer. Yeah, I heard right? that. I heard okay? about that, yeah. So I encourage him to, hey, go sing whenever you can. Let people know about this because yeah. it's hard to remember someone that does fin- you know, financial consulting or it's hard to remember somebody who's a videographer. But if you can if you can link up a talent, something that they can like, oh, the piano guy or the, the opera singer 100%. or whatever, the painter, it helps a lot. And it has helped a lot with, with, with my concerts. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, cross-branding, you know, cross-marketing. Uh, it's it's been really wonderful. You well, know? And, and it makes you, it makes you. I mean, you're touching all over. It, it makes you relatable. It makes you humanize people. 
all of a sudden start getting more skin in the game on you than than your business. And that's huge in in, in relationship. It's when it comes to business, relationships is everything. Sure. And so, uh, and and to your point, kind of a, a nice segue of that is you actually had, uh, or if I'm getting her name correct, Manisha Jones was right. the head of the cha- Chamber for Menifee. Yeah. Uh, come and and belt her voice out singing at one of your mixers. That's a perfect example right there. You know, yeah. she was very hesitant to do that. When I found out she was a singer, I'm like, hey, get up on stage. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm like, yes, 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 because you know, you'll be a lot more, not that she's not approachable, but you'll be a lot more approachable mm-hmm. and you have a lot more people wanting to speak to you, which is going to help you mm-hmm. get more members for the chamber. 100%. Well, and, and to your point, I've only met her the one time. I still remember her name. Mm-hmm. Why do you think I remember it? Because she was the one singing around on the dance floor, right. you know? Exactly. And that was great. And so, and, and that's a, so what's interesting is in the way that you, you go about representing these brands, you, you mentioned something that's kind of an interesting concept, and that's you're essentially protecting your passions, right? So you're, you're, you're passionate about music. You also learn that you could have passion about media and, and, and video and audio work. And the way that you protect them is by using the other to kind of lift up the other. Yeah. And I think that's something that business people need to understand. Like, I get why there's the, you know, the idea behind the American dream of chasing your dream and going after this thing that you want to do. But whoever said it had to be one thing? Right. You know, that's something that I think that we overlook a lot as people... And I've had, like, my own fair share of vocational changes. That's actually something, you know, Montanez and I were kind of bonding over this morning was kind of our weird rocky road of vocations. But people don't understand that side of people like us, the way that we tick. We're, we're not satisfied unless there's the challenge of making something that we appreciate, something passionate, more a part of ourselves, bigger. Even if it's not more noticed by people, as long as we know we've grown it in a, in a way that's necessary. Right. And I think that's what's obvious about you to me, and I think to everybody really, because like I said, you kind of see what you what you get. But for me, like it, I, you, you walk in, your cars are are wrapped with, with pianos and and Sebas and Sebas video production things. You get into the house, the garage speaks everything that you are. I talk to you about anything in life; it speaks about who you are, and you're not afraid to come back at me and give me tips about what I got to do to help my career. And I do mortgages, you know what I mean? Right. And that's that's huge in our world where. You're so comfortable with what you found and you're chasing them so passionately that I think it is important for you to be as honest as you are with people because a lot of people are trying to figure that part of them out still. Right. I mean, think about the college kids you talk to nowadays that have spent four to eight years in college and still don't know what they want to do with their lives. Right. Yeah. And I'm not knocking college. You can still go there. I got my degree. But at the end of the day, if you're not pursuing something that you are going to love doing and that's still going to actually put stuff on the table for you in the end, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not for everybody. Some people need direction and need, sure. you know, are, need to be followers. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to lead, especially lead your own life, you have to be very self-motivated, mm-hmm. you know, um, very driven. Yeah. You have to develop some confidence. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to fail yeah. over and over and over again. I failed. I have failed so many times. Yeah. And I consider each failure an asset, you know. Yeah. I, I, I now know of a hundred things I shouldn't do. All yeah. right. So yeah. that's an asset for me. And uh, I'm still doing it. You know, I'm still doing it. I'm still, you know, trying to grow and, and learn new things and, and expand both in my music and my video production yep. and even the mixer. You know, I've doubled down on my mixer and, you know, with sponsors and, and vendors and it's all going pretty good, you know, slowly but surely. Well, I think that's one's an aspect that because you see the aspects of your life that are strengths and you see that they're favorable and instead of trying to key in on one and only do one or do whatever you constantly are trying to find a way to make one help make the rest best better and vice versa you know it, it, i'm kind of a movie guy to a degree in the sense of like i like watching them I'm, I'm not technical like you guys but like i remember there's a line in a movie called we were soldiers with uh, mel gibson and there's a uh, a line where one of the young soldiers talks to mel gibson and it's right before they go into battle and he goes what do you think about being a soldier and a father and Mel Gibson's line is, I hope that being good at one makes me better at the other. And that's kind of the way that I see that what you're talking about. This, And this is really important for people to ga- gather is, I figured this back when I was general managing back for In-N-Out Burger back in the day where it didn't have to be that I could be only good at one. It's if you're focusing on the actual attributes and the core values of what those are, 
they can totally supplement and make you better at the other. Right. And so being a pianist, even though people didn't probably think right away, oh, that's going to make you a great audio video guy, you know, whatever, you found the correlations that needed to be there right. and you made it work and vice versa, even if it's only initially to fund the other one. But I guarantee you, like, if we're going to sit down all day and talk about all the different things that you've used that have kind of made you a better pianist from the other job or made you better at figuring out the technicalities and artistry of your of your productions, it would be really interesting. I think people would be enthralled to see how you've been able to connect those dots. Right. Well, actually, there's actually some more important dots that were before music. Sure, let's hear about it. Which them. was uh, I when out of high school, my, my parents owned a uh, clothing manufacturing business. Okay. Oh, okay. So we sold resort wear, jackets, and you know where people would put their logo. You know, and yeah. you'd, you'd see them at you know at shops at the pier or whatever. Mm -hmm. Anyways, my father would have me running around town, picking up different. Uh, items like uh, buttons, snaps, zippers, uh, cuffs, right? Uh -huh. I'd have to take uh, gar uh, fabric to the dye house. All these little things, all these just to build a jacket. You, f you think, oh, we're going to build a jacket. You just build a jacket. No. You, we, he, we had relationships with all these different manufacturers of different items to build this jacket. There you go. Right? So it wasn't just a one-stop one, one shop. You had to go to all these different places and have relationships with all these people. Yeah. Right? And it's and I looked at music the same way. I, I from that I learned a lot. That was like the best education I ever got. It's because, like a composition in itself. Well, not only the composition because when you're a musician, you have to well, you have to be your own booking manager. Mm -hmm. You have to do your own PR, design your you know. I mean, if you want to be self-contained, right? Yeah. Design your own album covers, record your own music. You know. Yeah. Purchase the purchase the CDs, the wrapping, the distribution. I mean, it, it goes on and on, right? Yeah. So there's so much to it. It. It's not yeah. just playing the piano. You can be the best piano player in the world. Yep. But you're going to be sitting at home unless unless you apply all these things, right? Absolutely. So, and it's the same thing with video production. You know, with any business really. And when I in for the mixer, for example, to me that mixer doesn't happen without all the vendors and the sponsors. You know. Yep. I you know you have to figure out a win 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 for everybody. Yeah. And that's what I try to do when I try to create something, whether it's a concert production or the mixer, is to 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 go and build all those relationships to make everything work. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. No man, that's that's good. Uh, I really like that, and especially because it, it resonates back to your earlier point of you you learn from your your past, you learn from your mistakes, you learn from your failures. Yeah. Because I guarantee you, while you're building all those relationships, with all those companies, there's mistakes made, communications made, whatever it was. And you learned how to apply that to a later later date in your life, yeah. And including the piano company itself, yeah. But I mean, it's it's interesting because I look at that too, and a lot of people are like, "How did you make the jump from burgers and chicken to 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 being a mortgage guy?" I'm like, "Well, the product's different, yeah. but the application's the same. I still got to run a good business. I still got to take care of customers. I still can learn, take all the core values and principles and learn from those great places and and apply them here." Yeah. And, you know, and that's and that's the beauty of it is, trust me, I fail a ton of times. I still fail every day. You can ask my family that question, you know, like, I, I fail all the time. But just like you said, it's it's how you respond to those failures that makes the difference between the product that you have. Yeah. So, that's cool, man. That's I really, part of life. That's life. Failures yeah. and success, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I, <clears throat> I kind of want to touch base a little bit, too, on um, would you consider yourself an extrovert? Or do you, would you say that you're more someone that does it based on just kind of necessity? No, no, I'm totally an extrovert. Okay, yeah. that's where I get, would put you yeah, at. But like I, I love, like I love having people over the house. My fiance hates it. Yeah, you know, I love to have parties. She okay. doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah, so you, know, you I love to, off the energy. Yeah, I love to bring people together. Yep, that's a huge thing. You know, yep. oh yeah, there's no way I can do the things that I. There's no way I would do a mixer or put myself in front of hundreds of people to perform if I wasn't an extrovert. You know, yeah. unless it was absolute necessity. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, no, no, I'm definitely an extrovert. Yeah. No, that's great, and I, and kind of the reason I kind of wanted to go that vein of things is, um, one of the important things about people is, is figuring that out, and like you just said, like there's no way I'd be doing this if this weren't my personality. Because think about it, if you're an introvert, you'd be miserable right now oh, running yeah. the, the the businesses you're running. Oh yeah, and people need to do that. They need to figure out who they are, because that's going to make the business part so much easier. Yeah, because kind of like we talked about, like I said earlier with our friend Montanez here. You know, Jonathan uh, from Rough and Ready hired him on because he didn't have that personality. He needed somebody that did. Yeah. And so there's always that understanding of where you're at can still always get you where you need to go. 
but it's just going to be a little different methodology to get there. Yeah. And based on that, the reason I'm touching on that is, what are some things that, I, that you find maybe you're having some of the biggest transitionary life moments for you that kind of like speak into your life even now that were like those moments where you realize not only who you are, but what you had to do to get where you're at now? Well, I think one of the one of the toughest things for me was was purposely um, putting my music in the back seat because it's something that I've you know you know you, when I started perform playing piano it was it wasn't because I wanted to be famous it's just because it was I was young so you know 17 years old it was because I wanted to play music yeah right just for music and then it became then all of a sudden I'm performing everywhere and I'm, I'm making money I'm getting tips and I'm selling CDs and all this great stuff and then you have these ambitious ambitions to to make it big and to try to get a record deal you know and of course you know most of the time you know, there's billions of artists out there that don't make it, right? Yeah. I'm one of those people that didn't make it. Right. I made it. I made it enough to make a great living at it. Sure. Okay. The, the, well, you know, as far as fame is concerned, because I had a, I had a biz, business mindset. Uh -huh. Okay. So I was able to make you know a really decent living, but like I said, I knew I didn't want to. I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. You know, because you know. It's, it's tough when it's something that you really love, that you pay the bills with. So at some point, I had to make that decision. Okay, I need to transition transition from music to video. Yeah. But I can't do it overnight. It has to be a very, like, gradual thing. Yep. You know, it was like... And it happened right at the perfect time when COVID hit. I was already... I had already made the final switch when I was... You know, I was 90%... Uh, when I first started, 90% music, 10% video. Yeah. And by the time COVID hit... I was ninety percent video, ten percent music. Wow. Okay, but it was a, it was very hard for me to accept that. Mm. I, part of me felt like I quit on my music. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, which in in in, in some way I did. Yeah, okay? I get it. Yeah, I get it. But I did it because you know I'm entering a new area in my life. You know, I'm in my forties, gonna you know getting engaged, owning a home. Yeah. I wanted something that 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 I can keep building with music unless you make it big you know you're gonna stay at a at a certain level sure and it was nice and fine but it was that's 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 as far as it was gonna go right okay and if i didn't have more financial goals that would have been fine but i did i have more bigger financial goals so video production was something i knew that there's no limits yeah you know there's no limits i can grow as much as i want to grow yeah so it was tough making that transition sure but then it got to the point where I was, where I realized, man, I'm doing so, so good, so well with my video business that I can bring that music back in now mm -hmm. on different terms. That's awesome. You know, like, like I'm, it's, it's, I don't resent it anymore. Yeah. Every time I do a concert now, there's no pressure. There's, you know, I it's mean, I mean, fun back when you were I mean, I make, I'm making money at it because yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, because I'm mixing all the relationships that I've built with my with right. my video business, but there is no, what if I don't do the, what if I don't make this much with music? Mm -hmm. That's gone. It, now it's a hundred percent just enjoyment. Yeah, you, you went know? back to the 17 year old you that loved it when you yeah, first started. Yeah, exactly. So Absolutely. that was a tough, that was probably the toughest thing to accept, but now I'm at the point where I'm glad I made that, made that decision. Yeah. You know? And who knows in the future if I decide to, you know, go, go a different direction. You know? Sure. Maybe I want, maybe I just needed a big, 10-year break doing something different and I'll decide to go back. Who knows, yeah, right? Absolutely. But for now, I'm just capitalizing on the success of my video business. And, and And again, you know, I, I didn't want to get bored, yeah. you know, with, you know, like I said, you do too much of anything, yeah. it can get boring. That's why I created the mixer. Yep. That gives me something else to work mm -hmm. to, to work and cross market, mm -hmm. you know. So now I have basically have like three different things, you know, like a big triangle. Yeah. You know, obviously the the video business is the head of the triangle, and then you got your, you know, yeah, you got your music in the mixer. Yeah. Know? So, but it's all sense. working. They're working together perfectly. Nice collaboration. Right yeah, 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 exactly. Well, no, and I, dude, that's a really cool point. I I like that a lot because one, it encourages people to have multiple passions. Two, it kind of shows them how to walk with them. And three, it kind of indicates something. So when I first started looking at being able to do my own thing and do my own business the way that we're doing now, I've sat with a buddy of mine who's been an entrepreneur for a long time. His name's Adam. Super great guy. He's the nicest guy ever. And he basically sat down with me and said, look, I read a book. I don't remember the book. I don't read books. I let other people who read books tell me about them. But he basically sat down and said, I don't read books either, dude. He's like, yeah. He's like, you know, I have two passions too. 
but this is the way that I did them. And it was very similar. I said, basically, know what your option A is and what your option B is. And don't ever let option B surpass your option A until option A is sustainable to where you can leave it to build up option B enough to pass up option A again. Right. And that's exactly what you did. Yeah. And that's what he was telling me is like, look, like, whatever you want to do in life, you can have all those options. Hmm. But no, whatever one you want to be number one, you have to make sure the other ones are sustainable so that way you don't lose them, right. but they're also giving you enough finances to keep the one that you want to turn into option A. If you can't be smart enough to make the transition the right way, yes. if you and if you make the switch, it's not going to work. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? It's so going to crumble. You, it's going to crumble. So you, if, mm-hmm. I mean, that speaks for itself. You know? Well, I think the best part about that statement is, I mean, reality-wise, I wouldn't consider myself smart enough to do that. And that's why I ask questions. Because I may not read a lot of books, but I talk to people. And I ask questions from people that have failed, that have won, that know what to do. And you've done that. I guarantee that in your life. I'm sure you could sit down and talk about all kinds of people that have impacted your life. But yeah. the reality is to get where we need to go, you have an insatiable, you have to have an insatiable need to learn. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, that's what I'm constantly doing. I'm always talking to people. And our inter- it doesn't matter if it's my, you know, I talk to lenders. I talk to non-lenders. I've talked to you. Whatever it is, I, I want to know what, you, what, what makes you tick and what makes you successful. Yeah. Because there's a guarantee there's something in there that's going to apply to me. Yeah. You know, and that's that's a really important uh, aspect of who you are. And it shows because I think that's part part of why the, you know, like the, the, the mixer and things exist is because your insatiable need to become better gets rubbed off just automatically by being surrounded by those people. Yeah. Because they're all professionals who good at what they do. Improvisation skills are important too. Yes. To, you know, to be able to have the ability to dive into something that you're on familiar territory mm-hmm. and just say yeah and yeah. just and, and just deal with whatever comes your way at that moment, mm-hmm. even if you're not don't have enough knowledge about it. Yeah. But just to have that improvisation skill where you're learning as you go and nobody's the wiser. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a good uh, point. I've done that a lot, you know. And mm-hmm. I've been okay. I haven't been caught yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, to be, to be fair, I'll be completely honest. That was my first episode ever here doing this. Yeah. yeah it was all improv. Like, yeah, sure. I know how to do a podcast. I had no, yeah. idea, no idea what I was doing, you know? Yeah. And then, honestly. I, People walk in this room and assume that you know what you're doing. Exactly. Right? And so. listening to us now, they know I don't. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, most people that are watching this don't realize that this is just a prop. It's not even on. <laughs> you know? It's fake. Fake. Yeah, James didn't skim. He skimped on yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. It's, <laughs> em- it's empty. <laughs> you guys can't tell. James is laughing behind the camera right now because we're ribbing him. But, yeah. Um, yeah, man. So, I, again, like, I've, there are a few people that when I walked into the chamber kind of impacted me right away. And, and everybody, also, because I do my own homework, whenever I talk to them and say, hey, who should I get to know? in order to learn these things in order to make sure I'm a good citizen in the community as far as like being a good business and, and being a good part of the chamber, et cetera, et cetera. And your name was always one of the top five always that came Thanks. up. And well, you're, so, doing, you're doing a great job of getting out there. I mean, you, well, I, I mean, that. I already, I was tired of seeing you everywhere. Um, <laughs> you were tired of the first time you <laughs> met me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but you're doing a great job. And then what you're doing here is great. You well, know, I appreciate you're doing, that. you know, you're, you're, you're doing kind of the same thing, you know, Keep keeping your industry, you know. Let's admit that you know mortgages. It's not the most exciting thing in the no, world, right? Not. I mean, but you're having fun with this, yes. It's, and then you can tell, mm-hmm. and this is great because now people get to people are learning more about your personality, right? You, you know, mm-hmm. you're putting your name out there, you know, helping you know people like myself sure. get out there even more. Yeah. So it's 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 great what you're doing, man. You should be very proud of this. Well, you know? I, I genuinely that means more than you know coming from you, like genuinely. And honestly, a lot of it is because of talking to people like you. Because I did. I sat down with all you guys. And I mean, I went to lunch with, with Carla and Jonathan. You and I went to your place. I've gotten sat down with a bunch of other people that I really respect in the area. And all of them gave me such great advice. You guys were all super uh, helpful. Nobody was condescending or patronizing. And, and these kind of products come out of that. you know. Like, yeah. And honestly, that's why I was a little bummed. This is not meant as a, as a jab. You couldn't make it to the ribbon cutting when we had it, because to me that ribbon cutting wasn't about us. It I was, was ava- I was available. I just didn't want to come. I know. I'm yeah. I'm used to that for me by now. But I thought you would at least Zoom call. But um, no. But the, the but I honestly saw that as, and this is what the intent was, and this is kind of what I I got from watching you guys is it was a nod and a thank you to everybody to help get us there. Yeah. And that's what this podcast really is in the end too. Like, yeah, it's absolutely an, an outlet and, and fun for me to do. It's become that. I didn't think it would, but it has. But um, it's one of those things that's really just been a nice nod to people like yourself who have impacted us and 
where we're going. Because, I mean, it impacts my family and what we eat. It impacts my partner, Willie, and what he eats and his right. family. And, and James, I mean, we don't feed him. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can <laughs> no, tell. but really, we, we appreciate the the guidance and the help in the community. Yeah. Well, we're all, you know, with the whole chamber community, we're all we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. And, for you know, for example, even if I never use your services, for example, if I never refinance or if I ever ha- already have a, someone to refinance my, my mortgage or whatever. Right. Doesn't mean that 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 you're not going to get something on the back end from people that I know. Sure. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. that's what it's this, this all about. You yeah. know, just like you know, you have a videographer, in-house videographer. Yeah. Hey, he might not be available one day for something, and you need my help, and I'll, I'm right here. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, we, just yesterday you offered me his job. I mean, I couldn't take it. Yes, I refer. Know? I refer all my business to you. I just don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, that's that's what it's all about. It's about. Uh, relationships and having good relationships not right. just knowing people but really you know developing friendships and where you can go out and have lunch and not even talk about business yep, right exactly well yeah. that's the reality of why you're sitting here too like you do have a, you have a, I've seen your stuff your products great quality thank you I obviously support your personality and your character I support the things you do in the community and so like even though I may not always be giving you direct business I'm gonna whatever I can we're gonna we're gonna throw it your way. I mean, and and that's the reality too. Is not everything is gonna be able to go James's way because we have a lot on his plate already being in house. Right. And so I've already referred you to people when when I know that's the case. So I I, I cannot uh, express enough how much we appreciate having you as part of our business journey because uh, I think it's such a fun thing to add to our our branding to have next to us and look and see that you know like I've got my title on escrow reps which you expect, but then I've got you know, videographer and pianist Sebastian CD with me, and I've got dental worker, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Carla Ricci, and, and all these fun people that create that family and community yeah. that you never look at when you were looking for a mortgage lender initially, you know? Right. So it's really cool that we get to be with that with you, and I really appreciate what you've been to us in the community thus far. Thank you, and likewise. Yeah. Likewise, I appreciate you being around, and and you're, you're a good energy in the room, so. I'm a good verbal punching bag yeah. for you, you mean? That's, well, yeah, that too. <laughs> No, but you're good energy. Dude. Well, you know, you, when you walk it. into a room, into an event, you know, you're somebody you can come and give a hug and have, you always have a smile on your face and uh, it's, it's a pleasure to, to, to know you as well. Yeah, man, I think I think that's what uh, kind of helps us connect is we kind of have a similar joy from being appreciative from where we come from. Yeah. You know, we know we, we've been, we had a lot of people in our lives that, that got us here. We've done a lot to get ourselves here and we're grateful that we are here. Yeah. So with that Absolutely. being said, guys, I'm going to wrap that up here because I know I'm going to get this guy back on the show at some point. I don't know how, but I'm going to. Yeah, even so. if we have this to is it. tie in and Unless you have him. a budget. Do you have a budget for the next one? Yeah, M&M's. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> but seriously, guys, I'm going to point all over the screen like this, all like I do, just to make him put some links up and stuff. <gasps> He's doing it with me. Now you have to do it. Um, and anything that we mentioned today, links as far as like Sebastian's uh, production studios. Now or- you're going to put the link um, to the mixer if you want to get a vendor spot. The link to my website if you need a video. That's, he's saying uh, everything I was going to say. Everything, guys, pretty much is, everything. You're, everything we talked about that can now. have a link. Yes. It's going to be on there. And take the rabble. I promise you it's worth it. He's got a lot of great stuff. But more importantly, like I said, he's a great community guy. He's going to be able to, to, to show you guys what it means to run a business in a really family uh, or familial way. So that uh, if you're trying to find get your feet on the ground and you're local to us, he's somebody you definitely should reach out to. He's helped me tremendously. I enjoy his friendship, and I know he'd do the same for you. So thanks again for tuning in to Two Mortgage Guys Podcast, and thank you, Sebastian, for joining us today. Thank you. All right. All right.